Allen, thanks for joining us from the Indy Grand Prix in Sonoma. I am Maria Soreo. Now, of course, the big news of this week is that Danica Patrick has announced that she will be leaving the IndyCar Series at the end of this season to drive in NASCAR next year full time. Now, I had a chance to catch up with Danica, who talks about what went into making her final decision. Danica, can you talk about what went into the decision making process to leave IndyCar to go to NASCAR? For you, yeah, I, I um, you know, I just had to really think about what was going to make me the happiest and where I wanted to race and where I thought I would have the most fun. Um, and I've really enjoyed racing those cars. And I was just talking to one of my crew guys, and I said that, you know, the races that I do well at in Indy cars are like all the races in NASCAR, which are, the, you know, you have to take care of your car at times. The the car changes a lot over a run. The track changes. The line moves. You got to adapt to the to the way that the the tires go off and things like that. And so, you know, that's kind of like our short oval races, like Loudon or Milwaukee, the the flatter tracks, and like Indy. And those are the races that I tend to do better at. So. You know, I'm just excited about it and, and wanted, you know, first thing was that what do I want to do? And then the second thing was, you know, what, what was GoDaddy prepared to do? And, uh, you know, Bob has said many times that, that I'm his girl and he'll go anywhere with me, which is a great thing to hear as a driver. But, you know, you, when, it, when it comes that time, you, you know, we, uh, we had to, you know, figure out what was possible. And they're still committed to me, so that's great. I guess I'll be really honest and use a, use a, something I was just talking about it with uh, some of my family and friends. But um, you know, Dario talked about driving a stock car for the first time, and he got in it and thought, "What is he doing? What am I doing?" And I got in a stock car the first time and thought, "This is awesome." <laughs> so you know, that's just a difference in feeling. So perhaps that means I'll be more suited. I'm not sure. Um, you know, I definitely uh, don't have the results over there that I've had in IndyCar uh, thus far in my career. So. Uh, you know, we'll have to see, but I definitely like driving it, and I, I, um, I almost feel like I'm racing go karts again, like back with my, f back with my friends, and I use the same lingo, and you know, I guess it made me realize how kind of European uh, IndyCar is, uh, using different words and the way that you talk, and even there's so much more of a, of a, of a, of an English and European engineering staff. So, um, yeah, I just felt at home. I can't, I can't lie, I felt at home. Well, there's been more than enough drama in the IndyCar Series this season, that is for sure. But none bigger than in the final laps in New Hampshire. And I had a chance to sit down with Penske team strategist John Erickson, who talks about just how important it is for everyone to be on the same page and to keep those lines of communication wide open. We're kind of talking about communicating today, and it seems like in the last few races, especially two weeks ago, there was sort of a lack of communication, a breakdown, if you will, between maybe what the drivers were experiencing in the car. It was too wet. Uh, some people yeah. wanted to stay out. Some people didn't. I know as a race strategist, you're sort of the next line of communication. How does that work? Mm -hmm. Well, typically, at, at every race, whether we're on an oval or a road course, the IndyCar series has, there's an official in every pit. Okay. Sometimes he may have to share, uh, he may be between our pit and the next car, but okay. there are officials up and down pit road. Okay. So if, if Elio or any other driver voices a concern about whether it's debris, weather, like we had in Loudoun, right. uh, the driver will tell us over the radio, we'll then get that official that's in the pit, and then he communicates it to the tower. Um, not having been in the tower, right. I, I, I do feel that I think at Loudon in particular, mm -hmm. I think all those officials were getting input and it was probably hard for a lot of them to get on the radio. There was a lot of talk uh, and, 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 and as well, of course, they've got the pace car out there. Right. So Johnny's got communication with the tower to let them know what's going on, but it, it, it's it's a tough call, right? Because there were a lot of pressures to get the race in. It was our first time back at Loudon in a number of years, yes. And I'm sure Brian wanted to put on a, a good, you know, get to the finish. So there were some pressures, just probably self-induced, that geez, we got to put on a good show and finish this thing. Um, unfortunate way to end it, uh, right. but but the communication is it's actually a pretty clean to the official who then gets to the tower and normally it's it's very easy to okay. get an answer straight back in that situation we had at Loudon I think everybody was trying to get communication and it yeah. was the lines of the radio the radio uh, waves were pretty busy 
but but it's day in and day out it's a good it's a good it's system. system yeah it really is it, it was interesting to watch some of the different different people trying to get a hold of them now what happens if maybe one driver says well it's not too bad I think we can stay out and another driver saying you know what we got to come in yeah typically in any series you will talk to the tower will talk to the leader okay or if in the if in the first few cars is a uh, uh, let's say a more experienced guy, uh, whether it be a Dario in, in our series or uh, 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 Will, Elio's been around for years. So if there's an experienced guy in one of those first few cars, they'll talk. They'll try to get a communication through the team. Okay. Uh, and then typically, as I say, they'll talk to the leader, whoever that may be, just to, he's got the best view because mm -hmm. the guy's in the second and third row are getting spray or whatever it may be. So. But yeah, they, they, they can get to each driver. I know, for instance, back in, in Brazil, when it was just, I don't think I've ever seen that much rain on a track before, yeah. and they sort of seem to stay out to try to, to, right. to race, and it's not Formula One, obviously, right. so right. it seemed difficult for them to stay out as long as they did. Yeah, yeah, well, there was standing water, yeah. and it's, it's it, especially when you get going at speed, a lot of times you see that, you see that standing water, and it's right. too late, you're in it. Yeah. So. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. I think it was kind of fun, maybe for a few minutes, but not too long. Yeah, that's when you're kind of wishing the the blowers and the brushes had gone out. But in that situation, there was so much rain, yeah. there was just nowhere to put it. So we had to try. Yeah. After a situation like last week, I know all of you learn from each other. Do you all meet together with IndyCar and everybody to kind of say, okay, we need to make this better, or? We don't know. There's no formal meeting. Okay. There's there's conversations that go on, obviously, and and uh, a lot of times it's an email or a phone call to, okay. to IndyCar. Just have you thought about, or here's what we maybe should have done. But but there there's a lot of communication. But it's all pretty informal. We we we've worked with each other for years, and so you just pick up the phone and. Well, it looks like sunny skies here in Sonoma, so yeah, hopefully we won't have that yeah, problem. Exactly. Right? We're good. We're good here. <laughs>